Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. All right. We're so glad y'all are here for our uh, midweek service. We've just got some announcements we want to touch on so we're all on the same page. Uh, we are still looking for uh, nursery workers on Wednesday night to help out. Uh, so if you can see Brenner or Kim, they would greatly appreciate your help. Uh, continue to remember our Monday night prayers. We're um, meeting every Monday night at 7 o'clock, and uh, we're really seeing God move and answer prayers. So if you're not here for that, uh, you're missing out. And is it is it the 18th, Pastor? 19th. 19th. It's the 19th. 19th. We're going to be um, going to Blackman's Grove and uh, joining the them in prayer. So uh, put that on your calendar. Right, a week from, from this coming Monday. So please make plans for that. And I know the Lord will richly bless you. And uh, continue to remember the school drive. Uh, we're taking up the disinfectant wipes, the hand sanitizer, and the hand soap. So please uh, pick some of that up while you're out and about. Don't forget your small groups. Uh, we're really seeing some good things happen. We're seeing uh, uh, as a group, as a family, we're growing closer. We're learning more about each other. We're learning more about the Lord. So if you didn't get plugged in on that this go around, we're going to be offering classes uh, coming up shortly after this session ends. So please make plans for that. Also, uh, don't forget our trunk or treat. That's uh, going to be here before you realize it when you're out. Pick up a bag of candy or, or something along those lines to uh, contribute to that. And uh, we're going to have a sign-up sheet, or we're going anybody that wants to decorate their car for that, uh, go ahead and be thinking about what you're going to do. And we're also going to have a costume contest. Whoever has the best biblical uh, costume is going to, uh, I think the first prize is like $100 or something like that. And the second prize will be a Tootsie Roll. So uh, shoot for the first <laughs> prize. Now, I don't know what the second prize is. I want second. But, uh, but anyway, yeah, a Tootsie Roll. Wow. So, uh, so make plans for that. Uh, don't forget homecoming that's coming up. That these things are going to be on us uh, before we realize it. We'll be talking about Christmas and Christmas parties and stuff. And then you know, once you hit that point, you know everything just zooms by. That's going to be the twenty fifth. So make go ahead and be praying about what the Lord will lay upon your heart to to give for the building fund because we're trying to pay off this facility here. And whatever the Lord gives you, He will richly bless you if you'll be obedient to Him. And uh, bring no food. Uh, we got our, our special uh, French chef that's going to be coming in. Uh, Charlemagne, he's over there with the black cap on. Uh, but he does great. He's got a great group of helpers, so uh, so we're going to appreciate that and enjoy that. But, again, don't forget that's uh, October the 25th. And uh, please continue to remember the prayer request that we uh, prayed about here Sunday morning. We're hearing good reports. We're hearing people getting better. But we still got people that stand in need of prayer. Pastor visited with Miss Rosemary, and, and she's still uh, standing in the need of prayer. We need to pray that God will move upon her situation. And I know there's probably others, um, but, you know, we serve a God that is able to move upon whatever the need. You know, sometimes we look at stuff, and in our own ability, we just kind of drop our heads because, you know, I cannot do anything against cancer in and of my own ability. But, you know, I serve a God that is above cancer, and cancer is under his feet. And when Jesus said it was finished on Calvary, cancer was finished. That's right. We just have to trust in him, believe in him, because if we'll do our part, I believe, and I know God is obedient to step in and, and where our ability is in and finish what needs to be done. So if there's um if there's no other special request, do please remember Miss Danette Rogers. She is trying to get back from uh, the missions trip, and uh, we pray that God's safe blessings will be upon her traveling mercies. Um, so let's go to God in prayer, and let's continue to see God's face and know that he will touch and move upon our special. Father God, Lord, we thank you for your blessings, dear Lord. We thank you for your goodness and your mercy, dear Father. Lord, we thank you for your provisions upon each and every one of us today. For if you had not shown us mercy, if you had not shown us grace, Father, we would not be here. We would not be alive, oh God, but it is by your grace and your mercy 
that we are here, dear Father. Lord, we pray that you would touch the folks in our body, in our families that need a move of God in their life. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus that you would touch Miss Rosemary right now, dear God, that you would be with her, Father God, that you would heal her of that cancer, dear God. Lord, give her peace, dear God, strengthen her, dear God. And Lord, we know that, that you are the only source of that, dear God. You are not limited by time or finances or technology, God. You stand outside of all of those things. And Lord, we pray that you would be with her, God. There's so many needs, dear God. Lord, be with Kristen Hammond, dear God, and touch her in her situation, dear God. And all the other folks, dear God, that need a move of God, that need a healing, we pray that you would touch them. Lord, be with us in this service tonight. God, help us to see you in a better way. Bless Pat as she brings this music to just draw us closer unto you. And bless our pastor as he brings forth the bread of life. And Father, we thank him, we love him, we'll give you the praise for it all. In Jesus' name we do pray. I heard an old, old story How my Savior came from glory How he gave his life on Calvary To save a wretch like me I heard about his groaning Of his precious blood's atoning Then I repented of my sin and won the victory oh victory in jesus my savior forever he sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood he loved me ere i knew him and all my love is due Plunge me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about his healing, of his cleansing power revealing. How he made the lame to walk again, and he caused the blind to see. And then I cried, dear Jesus. Come and heal my broken spirit. And some sweet sheep came and brought to me the victory. I heard about a mansion he has built for me in glory. And I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea about the angels singing and the old redemption story and some sweet day i'll sing up there the song of victory oh victory in jesus my savior forever he sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood he loved me ere i knew him and all my love is to him he plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood he loved me me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Aren't you glad you've got victory in Jesus tonight? You may be seated. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 It's good to be in the house of God tonight. I'm excited. All right. Well, we are in the tabernacle. Amen. 
Carrington, can you put me that up? There we go. There we go. Got the tabernacle up there. I, I like to put that up there so you can kind of get an idea of what we're talking about. Because it's hard to, um, when you, you don't have a road map, when you don't have something to look at, well, then it, it's very difficult to, um, to visualize some of this stuff in, in your mind. Um, as, if we look at the tabernacle there, why, I'm gonna just, we'll just kind of go through it real quick again. You got the door. You got one way in. Amen. Just like Jesus Christ. There's one way to the Father, and that's through the Son. There's a door in. There's one way in. The first thing you get to is the brazen altar. Um, that's where, where the, the sacrifices, and that's where the blood was shed. Um, you know, so, so that's the first place that you would go. Then the brazen laver where you would be cleansed or for sanctification. And then you would go into the holy place. Remember the, the, uh, the, the little tabernacle there was, was divided into two, two spots. It was only 15 feet wide. It was 45 feet long. Um, the holy place was um, 15 by 30, and then the holy of holies was 15 by 15. Okay, not a real big, not a real big um, thing at all when you think about it. I, I mean, I would, I would imagine in my mind it was a lot bigger than that, but it, but it's not. It's it's rather small. Okay, so in the in the holy place, why as you walk in to the right, why the table of showbread, which um, uh, we talked about last week. Um, you also have the altar of incense at, at at the front, and then you have the golden candlestick on the on the left side. Okay, and then. Behind the veil, you have the Holy of Holies, where the um, Ark of the Covenant is, um, was at. So that kind of gives you an idea, once again, kind of a road map of, of what we're looking at and what each one of these things represent. Well, tonight we're going to talk about the golden candlestick, um, although it, it really wasn't a candlestick at all. It was actually a lamp. Um, they didn't use candles. They used oil. Um, so it was, it was filled with olive oil, actually, is what they burned in it. Um, Pure olive oil. So, so understand that when they call things a candlestick, that's not really accurate. It wasn't a candlestick at all. It was a lamp um, that burned oil. So, so uh, you know, some of this translation that we have in in the Bible, why it's not it's not as accurate as it could be. Um, it really should be called a a lampstand and not not a candlestick. But anyways. So here we go. So we're in chapter 25, starting in verse 31. We talk about the gold lampstand. We talk, um, and I'm going to just read, read through this, and then I, I want us to bring something out. I, I want you, to, I want you to, to, to get in touch with the symbolism of things in the tabernacle. What, what um, they represent, what, what it represents in, in the Word of God. I think that's important that we, we understand these things um, and as, we, as we study these. So let's, let's look at the gold lampstand. Um, we're going to go ahead and start in verse 31 of chapter 25. It says, You shall also make a lampstand of pure gold. The lampstand shall be of hammered work. Its shaft, its branches, its bowls, its ornamental knobs and flowers shall be of one piece. Now I want you to just think about that for a second. Just, we're going to stop right there just for a second. I, normally I'd read all the way through this. It's of one piece, okay? It's hammered of one piece. I want you to think about how difficult that would be to hammer something of one piece. Carrington, can you put that picture that I have? They don't really know what it, what it looks like for sure, um, but this is a representation possibly of what the, the gold um, lampstand looked like. As you look at that, why, why? imagine all of that being hammered from one piece of gold. Well, I want you to think about what they did in the, under the inspiration and the power of the Holy Spirit, the artisans that were able to do that. Um, you've, got, you've got the seven branches. You've got all that going on right there. So I want, I want to leave that up there as, they, as I read through the Word. You all follow along in, in the Bible, but, but, um, but I want you to see what we're talking about so you can see how cool this thing is. It's absolutely beautiful, um, and, and it's made out of gold. So it, it says here... Um, Verse 32, and six branches shall come out of its sides, three branches of the lamp stand out of one side, three branches of the lamp stand out of the other side. Three bowls shall be made like almond blossoms on one branch with an ornamental knob and a flower, and three bowls like an almond, almond blossoms on the other branch with an orma, ornamental knob and a flower. And so for the six branches that come out of the lamp stand, on the lamp stand itself, four bowls shall be made like almond blossoms, each with its ornamental knob and flower. And there shall be a knob under the first two branches of the same, a knob under the second two branches of the same, a knob under the third two branches of the same, according to the six branches that extend from the lamp stand. Their knobs and their branches shall be of one piece, and all of it shall be one hammered piece of pure gold. You shall make seven lamps for it. And they shall, all, or they shall arrange its lamps so that they give light in front of it. And its wick trimmers and their trays shall be of pure gold. It shall be made of a talent of pure gold. 
with all these utensils. And see to it that you make them according to the pattern which was shown you on the mountain. Okay. Wow. I mean, that's pretty cool. Um, something that I, that I wanted to, um, to talk about for just a second or maybe interject or whatever. Um, the purpose of the lampstand was to illuminate the holy place. So I want you to think about that. This is where all the light came from. When you went in the holy place, that was the light source. Was The light source was that lamp is, is the, what, what lit the place up. Um, I want you to think about Jesus Christ being the light. Amen? When we start talking about that in the Word of God, we talk about Jesus being the light. The lampstand is, is one of those things that there are so many parallels to the Lord Jesus Christ that, that we could just go on and on and on and on about parallels to, to Jesus Christ and the lampstand. Um, that lamp burned continually. They didn't never let it go out. It burned continually. They, they made sure they tended it. They made sure they kept it full. They kept it full of oil. They had to keep it full of oil. So every day you had to make sure that thing had, had oil in it so it could burn continually. I want you to think about each one of us and our, our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, that we need to be full of the Holy Spirit. We need to be full of the oil of God that we burn all the time. And you got to do that every day. You got to go back every day. You got to make sure that you're, you're keeping yourself as you should be so that you are illuminated by the power of the Holy Spirit in your life. Okay. Now, I want you to think about this for a second. It tells us in here in the Word, it says, um, let me see what verse it, it tells us this. Um, I was trying to see. There it is, verse 39. It says, it shall be made of a talent of pure gold. All right, a talent of gold. You know how many, you, does anybody know how much a talent of gold is? See, I looked it up because I didn't know either. Amen. Right? I didn't know either. And there's a lot of latitude. There's some people that go high on this uh, estimate, and some people go low on this estimate. I'm going to go in the middle, okay? So I'm, I'm just going to go, I'm just going to go in, in the middle, okay? Because I don't want to go, you know, I, I don't know how much a talent was, but I'm going by what the scholars tell me. They tell me that a talent of gold is equal to 75 pounds. Okay. 75 pounds of pure gold, y'all. All right, so then I decided, well, that's a lot of gold. That'd be really cool to have 75 pounds of gold, wouldn't it? Pure gold. So I looked as of October 2nd, 2020, 75 pounds of gold is worth $2,078,475. That lampstand is a $2 million lampstand. I mean, I want you to think about this. Out there wandering in the desert. I mean, they make a lampstand that weighs of 75 pounds of gold. A $2 million lamp. God is awesome, y'all. The last I knew, these people were slaves in Egypt. The last I know, they didn't have anything. What, I, what they did do is before they left, they asked them for everything they had, and they gave them everything they had. They absolutely plundered the Egyptians, and they gave them gold and silver and all kinds of things, and they gave them a lot, evidently, because this one piece was 75 pounds of pure gold. That's cool. I don't know. I'm impressed with that. Maybe you all aren't impressed with 75 pounds of gold, but I'm here to tell you, I am impressed. 75 pounds. Wow. I'm impressed that it was one piece. I'm impressed that it was one piece. They didn't put pieces together. One piece. They made that thing. I don't know how they made it. I don't, I don't understand that. Uh, it, it's absolutely amazing to me. So, so as, we, as we think about this, as they walk into the holy place, that it's lit, it's illuminated by this lamp with those seven flames upon it. Um, and, and I think about that, that you walk in the holy place. You got the table of showbread to the right. Um, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. I mean, you, you, you got that on one side, okay? You got the altar of incense to the front. Incense representing the prayers of the saints, right? Amen? I mean, if we go through the Bible and you can get in the book of Revelation, you've got straight parallel incense to prayers. I mean, it's right there. You don't even have to, you know, go eat, research, check it out. And then you have the gold lampstand to the left, Jesus Christ being the light of the world. I mean, I, you know, the, the, whole, the only light in there was because of this lampstand. And so, so I want you to understand and look at this. So as we look at the lampstand and we compare that to Jesus Christ, I want, I want to do that for a second, or maybe we'll just do that for the rest of the night. Because I think that there's plenty we can, we can look at. So first of all, gold. 
Anytime gold is represented, what's gold represent? Purity, deity, God, okay? Absolutely pure. So, so I, I've got written down here, you know, that gold typified the deity of Christ. But then, I, you know, Brother Charles, you bring up a good point. Made of pure gold, not just any pure gold. I mean, I want you to think about that because I, I don't know if you realize, but the purer gold is, the softer it gets. Amen? If anybody knows anything about jewelry, it, the purer it gets, the softer it gets. They made that thing out of pure gold. I mean, I'm here to tell you that was pretty impressive. All right, well, think about this. So if we're talking about Jesus Christ, let's, let's just think about this for a second. Purity. Jesus Christ was without sin. Lived his whole life. Look, each one of us, we've all sinned, fallen short of the glory of God. But Jesus Christ tempted in all ways and tried and yet never sinned. He was, he was pure, completely pure, just like this pure gold that they put in this lampstand. You have a pure Savior that was without sin. Um, if, if, we, if we look in the, in the Word of God, if you pull up 2 Corinthians 5.21, I believe it speaks of the, the, um, the purity of Christ, that He was without sin. Um, so that's, that's a, a, a reference there for you if you want, you want to look at that. And so then, as I, as I started looking through, through all this, it, it was one hammered piece of pure gold. And so then I started thinking about this. You know, the Word of God's bubbling up in me when I start thinking, right? I and the Father are one. Amen. Because see, see, here's the, the thing about, about Jesus Christ, you know, that, that he, he and the Father are one. And so then I, I went back to the, the verse that I started with or, or part of the, uh, the word that I started with on Sunday, Ephesians chapter 4. Um, when, I, when I started looking at this, I, I was like, oh my gosh, there, there it is again. Um, when we look at Ephesians chapter 4, starting in, in verse 4, it tells us this. It says, there is one body and one spirit, just as you were called, and one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and one Father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. So as I look at this, why I think about this, this uh, lampstand, it is, it is one piece of hammered gold. It's one piece. It's a hammered work. It's one piece. I and the Father are one. You got one body, one spirit, one hope, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God. All of that together, okay? See, we, we've got to, you got to take the Word of God and, 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 and just consume it and allow it to speak to you through the Word. So then I was thinking about this and I was, I was reading this. Um, the, the King James Version says that it, it is beaten. Y'all read that? Some of you got King James Bibles probably with you tonight, right? What's it say? What's it say about this thing? Instead of hammered, it says beaten, I believe. Beaten, right? It says it's beaten. Well, I got to thinking about that. Beaten. I wonder if that's a mistake. I don't think that's a mistake, right? Because then I got to thinking about this. Okay, well, well, well let's, let's, let's talk about Jesus Christ. And, and so I said, well, you know, maybe I should look at Isaiah chapter 53. Um. When they start talking about the suffering servant, Isaiah chapter 53, verse 5, tells us this. How many times have we, have we quoted this? But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. So when they talk about this as being a, a beaten work or one hammered piece of pure gold, I, I, I think about all this, and, and you can tie all this together, that Jesus Christ took stripes for the healing of mankind, spiritually and physically, that he was beaten, he was literally beaten, and here you have a piece of beaten gold, something that's absolutely pure, something that is one piece, something that is one body, one spirit, one hope, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, I, I just think about, you know, I wonder how many parallels that we could go on this. Yeah, yeah, amen, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, right, right, all this, all this, I mean, when you start, when you start looking at, looking at all these things, y'all, I mean, it's all right there, when, on the road to Emmaus, I want you to think about this. You go to go to your New Testament or whatever. When you when they were when they were on the road to Emmaus, and there was a couple of disciples there, and they were talking to someone, and it turned out that it was Jesus, but they didn't recognize him. And when he told them 
about who Jesus, who this Messiah was, he pulled everything from the Old Testament to show who he was. See, if the New Testament was never written, we would still find Jesus Christ in the book of Exodus, in the book of Genesis, all the way through the Bible. He's there every step of the way. He's there. He's in the midst of it. And if we'll just look and we'll just take a look at what's going on, why we'll see, we'll see that. You know, the thing about this, and here, here's something interesting. Um, everything that, that's in there that they talk about, like the, um, the Ark of the Covenant, the box, they had, they had um, measurements for it, right? It had to be a certain size. The mercy seat, the lid that went over it, had to be a certain size. Everything had to be a certain size. What size was the golden lampstand? There ain't measurements there. There's no measurements there. That's interesting to me. Everything else had measurements. There's no dimensions given of, of this, of this uh, lampstand. And, once I, and like I said earlier, it, it was made of a talent of gold, approximately 75 pounds, $2 million of gold. I mean, it, it's absolutely awesome. So, so I start looking at, at, this, at, this, at this lampstand. I see three stems to the left, three stems to the right, and a stem in the middle. Okay, so I, I, it's, it's just it's, it's amazing to me as I start looking through all of this. Um, a lampstand's purpose was to provide light. John 8, 12. I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. I'm here to tell you, without Jesus Christ, we are in darkness. Without him, we, he is the light. And this lampstand, I, I just believe that, that the representation here over and over and over again represents Jesus and how he ministers to us as believers. Oil in the lampstand represents the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Anytime we talk about oil, they're always talking about the Holy Spirit. And, and notice this, at the top of each branch was a cup into which pure olive oil was poured. So not only was the gold pure, but the olive oil was pure. No impurities in it. And they would fill each one of those at the top with olive oil. Now I want you to just think about that. It was poured in. Um, we don't sometimes realize how tied together the Word of God is. Um, I want to want to pull a reference from the book of Revelation. I know Jane's been going through that in her Sunday school class and everything, but but I want you to I want you to just kind of kind of think about this because the symbolism in the book of Revelation. You know, do you realize if you study the book of Revelation, you will study the whole Bible. If you study the book of Revelation, you will study the entire Bible. Possibly, we really need to start with Revelation sometimes, and because you're going to hit the whole Bible. Why? Because all the symbolism that's contained in the book of Revelation is from the whole Bible. It's all Old Testament. It's all there, every bit of it. I mean, it, it's not new stuff. It's, it's, it's the stuff that was already there. It's just being reformulated and shown to us in a different way. So Revelation chapter 4, as we, as we look here, I want you to, want you to think about, about this right here. Let me see if I can find um, where I'm at and get the right, right thing. Okay, Revelation chapter 4, they talk about the throne room of heaven. Okay. Verse 2, he says, Immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, the throne set in heaven, and one who sat on the throne, and he who sat there was like a jasper and a sardius stone in appearance, and there was a rainbow around the throne in appearance like an emerald. And around the throne were 24 thrones, and on the thrones I saw 24 elders sitting, clothed in white robes, and they had crowns of gold on their heads. Now, and from the throne proceeded lightning, thunders, and voices. Now listen to what's next. Seven lamps of fire were burning before the throne which are the seven spirits of God so when you look at that 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 golden lampstand you see that there's there'll be seven flames that would be burning on that and and I, and so I can't help but but think about the symbolization there the seven spirits of God symbolize the perfection and the fullness of the Holy Spirit's ministry that, that before God, I mean, when you think about the throne room of God, you know, they said that everything that they placed in there was a copy or a representation of the things in heaven. I mean, all this. So if we really want to know what the throne room of God looks like in heaven, then we need to study what the tabernacle looks like. 
Because it's a representation. And if you read the book of Hebrews, it's going to tell you that. That it's a representation of, of what was in heaven here on earth. Now, an imperfect one nonetheless, but a representation. So that it starts telling you what the throne room of God would look like. The Holy Spirit's animating force in the church poured out at Pentecost. Now, I want you to think about that. If the Spirit of God's not moving in the church, there's no power. Just, there's no power. We're meant to be Spirit-filled and Spirit-empowered as Christians. When we think about the light, the light represents everything to us as we, as we stand before Christ, that He lights our way. He, he, he shows us the way. He shows us how we should be. And we, and we, we look through all these things. What about the, the Holy Spirit in the Lord's life? Because, see, I, I, I think that this is interesting. Now, maybe you guys might not think this is very interesting, but I think it's very interesting to me that what, what Jesus, because I'm here to tell you this, and, and, and we are not Jesus, okay? So don't, 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 don't go and say Rick said that we're Jesus. But I want to tell you something about what Jesus Christ did when he walked on this earth. Everything that he did in the power of the Holy Spirit, a believer can do. And you look at me and say, I'm crazy. No, I'm not crazy. When he raised Lazarus from the dead. What did he do before he raised Lazarus? Did he just say, come on out? Well, he spoke his name, but, but what did he do when he rose Lazarus? When he, before he got, he gets there, okay, everybody's there. Lazarus has been dead for four days. He said, Lord, you, you could, don't go in there. He's stinking. He's been dead. For, he's dead. He's dead as a doornail. He's been dead for four days. He's stinking. Lord, what are we going to do? What's he do before he calls him from the grave? Well, he cried. Okay, he wept. But what did he do? He is the life, right? The, but, but what did he do? Somebody tell me. Who, who, what did he say? He talked to the Father, right? What did he say to, what did he say to the people? Because he stopped. out to the Father and wanted to show them where the power was coming from. So he stopped. I mean, look, I'm here to tell y'all the power of the Holy Spirit is real. The reason why we don't see a lot of signs and wonders and things happening in the church is because we no longer believe in the power of God. That's why. That's why. It's not because God's, God's not changed. God is the same yesterday, today, forevermore. He is the same. The same God that was there. The same God that rose Lazarus from the dead after four days is the very same God, the very Holy Spirit that embodies each one of us as a believer. That's the God we serve. When we talk about Jesus, think about this. Think about Jesus Christ. And, and, and I know you can't separate this because it's weird. But Jesus was fully God and fully man all at once. He set aside his divinity, amen, to walk with us as a human being to show us what it could be like. Jesus Christ, I want you to think about Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Right? Matthew 1.18 if you want to look that up. Let's get another thing. Jesus was baptized by the Holy Spirit. Matthew 3.16, okay? See, I want you to think about this as believers, amen? We, we are brought to life through the power of the Holy Spirit. We were dead, and then the Holy Spirit quickens us, praise God, and we come to life through the power of the Holy Spirit. So although we were not conceived by the Holy Spirit like Jesus Christ was, we are brought to life from the Holy Spirit. We are baptized by the Holy Spirit. We are anointed by the Holy Spirit. Jesus was anointed by the Holy Spirit. A dove come down from heaven upon him and lit upon him. He was empowered for service by the Holy Spirit. And most important, he was resurrected by the power of the Holy Spirit. Romans 8.11 says that that very same power lives in us. The resurrection power of God. Man, I want you to just, just 
Think about the power of the Holy Spirit. Represented by this lampstand. As you go into the holy place. Hallelujah. You're not going to get into the holy of holies without yourself being illuminated by the light of Christ to be able to go on in. So I looked some more about the Spirit of the Lord. Um, Isaiah chapter 11. Let me look at this real quick. Because I, I was just, look, I'm fascinated by this. This is just, it just blows my mind when I start looking through all of that, all that God has um, given us in the Word of God. That if we'll just open it up, we'll mind the riches of, of the Word. Okay, so, so let's, let's take, a, take a look at this for a second. Um, Carrington, will you put the um, lamp stand back up for me, please? I think it's kind of kind of important that we have the have the picture. Okay, be looking at the picture. Isaiah chapter eleven, verses one and two. I want to read these verses and then I want to kind of just um, elaborate a little bit. It tells us this in Isaiah chapter eleven, starting in verse one. It says, "There shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of its roots." The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Who's being spoken of there? Because there's really a, a double thing, but, but who's, who's the main? Jesus, right? Jesus. Amen? Okay, well, well let's, let's think about this for a second. When we, when, we, when we read the word here, it says, There shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse. A branch shall grow out from out of his Roots. Now, I want you to want you to take a look at that that lampstand. That there is one branch that comes all the way from the bottom, all the way to the top in the middle. Amen. I mean, I, I believe that that's that's representative of of, of Jesus Christ in, in 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 a way to where he was the branch that grew out. Okay. Then then it talks about the spirit of the Lord resting upon him. Now now I want you to want you to think about this for a second. You got you got three branches over here. You got three branches over here. Okay. Now let's let's go through this in in uh, Isaiah chapter eleven. Let's go in in. Verse 2, it says, the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. So let's go, let's go in the middle for Jesus, right? The spirit of the Lord resting upon him. Okay, let's start picking off the, the arms down the side. Well, well, what do you have here? You have a spirit of wisdom, okay? A spirit of understanding. A spirit of counsel. A spirit of might. A spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. So you got all seven covered there. Now, now, when we start thinking about this and we start understanding these things, that, that we should have that kind of, of, of power and anointing in our lives through Jesus Christ, our Savior, our vertical component, then we should, we should be walking in a spirit of wisdom. Where's wisdom come from? From God. Where do you, where, what do you do if you need wisdom? Ask God. Is that in the Bible? Where's it at? Book of James, I believe right in the very beginning, it says if you need wisdom, ask. And he'll give it to you. Amen? We should be walking in, in supernatural wisdom. If you don't have it, then we need to get on our face and start crying out to God and ask for wisdom. I mean, you got to have that. Okay, okay, Lord, uh, you've given me wisdom, but now I'm, I'm befuddled because I don't understand what you're trying to... How many of you ever had the Lord lay something out for you? Just lay it out and you're like, Lord, that's really cool. That's so awesome. That's so wise. That's wonderful. But I don't understand. Me all the time. Lord, I don't understand. I don't get it. Okay, well, see, if we're walking in the power of the Spirit, the first thing the Spirit's going to give us is wisdom. Well, then He's going to give us understanding. Now, see, you've got to work your way in to the Word of God. Okay, you've got to work your way in. You start with wisdom. Then you get to understanding. Okay, well, now you've got to have counsel. You know, what, what do I do, Lord? I, I, don't, I don't understand. I mean, I, sometimes we need God to be, the Holy Spirit to be our counselor to help us. To know, I, you gave me wisdom, Lord. Okay, I'm understanding, but I still need some counsel. Have you, ever, have you ever learned something and you just don't know what to do with it? That's where the Holy Spirit of God comes in and gives you counsel. You see, what usually happens when we get wisdom and we get understanding, we get counsel. Then, you know what happens a lot of times? We get cold feet. We get scared. We're afraid. How many of you, if the Lord called you to do something, you were scared to death? 
If you ain't been scared by the Lord and been called to do something, you ain't been called to do anything. Because I'm here to tell you, if he calls you to do something, it will absolutely petrify you. You're like, oh, man, I, I can't do that. I'm unworthy. First thing we say, I'm unworthy, Lord. I'm here to tell you that. That's fine. He, he'll take a coal from the fire and touch your lips, and you will no longer be a man or a woman of unclean lips. Praise God. The Spirit will overcome all that. You will have wisdom, understanding, counsel. What I need is might, Lord. I need to be built up in such a way that I'm willing to go forward with what you've given me. There is entirely too many people that have the wisdom of God. They have the understanding of God. They have the counsel of God, but they're chickens. Scared to death. Oh, I can't say that to somebody. Well, if the Lord's laid it on your heart, then you need to speak. You need to speak. You can't just, you've got to speak it. Wisdom, understanding, counsel, might, knowledge. Man, I'm here to tell you. Knowledge, completely different thing than wisdom. Amen. We speak of a gift of the Spirit. A word of knowledge. You ever received anything from God that was supernatural knowledge that you don't understand where that came from or how it happened, but it just got laid into your spirit? Gift of the Spirit. Sometimes we, we, we tell God, I'm not able to do this. I'm not equipped to do this, God. And God says, hold on. I've given you my Holy Spirit to live in you. The Bible says that we are now the temple of the Spirit of God. Right? I mean, it says that. Corinthians, I mean, you can look it up. It's, it's in there. But So if God has given us the Holy Spirit, the very Spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead, amen? And that's amazing to me because that's bigger than anything I could ever imagine happening. Resurrection. I've never seen a resurrection, y'all. I'm ready for a resurrection. I've never seen one. Which I don't know that you could stand me if I did. I just, <laughs> man, whoo. You don't think you're ready. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So if the Holy Spirit lives in us and he's given us wisdom, he's given us understanding, he's given us counsel, he's given us might, he's given us knowledge, hallelujah, that we, we should be able to overcome all these obstacles and we should quit telling God, I can't do that. God doesn't like I can't. When he called Moses from the burning bush, and hey, let's think about this, 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 this lampstand right now. Wouldn't that sort of be like a burning bush, amen? It never goes out. The burning bush, it, it burned, and it didn't burn up the bush. It just kept burning and burning and burning. They never let that go out. It had to burn all the time, seven days a week, 365 days a year. They kept it full of oil. It burned all the time. Moses stood before the burning bush, looked over and said, Whoo, man, that is very interesting. That's really different. That's crazy. I'm out here herding sheep, been out here 40 years, never seen anything like this. He went over to investigate. And when God told him his name, what, what did he say his name was? He said, I am. I am. Right? I am. He said, who do I tell? Who do I tell him that, that sent me? He said, tell him I am sent you. Okay, well, I'm here to tell you. I am does not have I can't in it. Does it? So why is it that we are so timid and so I can't on everything? We can't do this. We can't do that. We can't do this. We can't do that. I'm here to tell you, if you can't do it because you don't have the money, can I tell you who has the money? God. He's got the cattle of a thousand hill. He's never short. Praise God. Now, he may be keeping the money in your bank account, waiting for you to sacrificially cough it up so the kingdom can go forward, but he's never short a dime. My God's got it. So, so we're not short money. Praise God. We, we don't understand how to do that. The Holy Spirit will give us wisdom. So we should be able to walk in the wisdom of God. But I don't understand what to do. He will give you understanding. He will give you counsel. He will give you might. He will give you knowledge. He will give you everything that you need. Praise God. 
It should be life changing when the Holy Spirit of God comes upon us. It should be life changing, y'all. We shouldn't be poor mouthing and whining to God because I can't. I can't, Lord. I can't do. Yes, you can. You serve the great I am. I am. I am. I am. You know what's beautiful about God, though? Is that He'll keep us humble. You say, well, Rick, you just told me that we can do all these things. Yes, we can do all these things through Christ Jesus who strengthens us. Amen. But He will keep us humble. I want you to think about the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul was taken into the third heaven, saw stuff. That they couldn't even, he couldn't even tell about because I don't even know that there was a way that he could describe it. It was indescribable. It was, there was no words to speak of what he saw. He went to the third heaven. I mean, I'm here to tell you, you want to talk about getting puffed up? The Lord takes me up to the third heaven and I come back, y'all ain't going to be able to stand me. I'm going to be like, I've been there. I've seen it, y'all. Woo! Man, I came here to tell you, don't worry about any of this. Praise God, the great I am has took me into the third heaven. Oh, it's so awesome. You won't believe this. And people would not have been able to stand the man. So you know what happened? You know what's next in the story? Anybody know what's next in the story? What's, what's your idea, brother? An interrupt. It is an interruption because it's a thorn. The Apostle Paul. Apostle Paul. You want to be like somebody? Be like the Apostle Paul. Amen. You want, to, you want to copy yourself after someone? The Apostle Paul would be a good one to start with. Anybody that would be, would be stoned with rocks and left for dead and then within a few days is right back preaching the gospel again? That's somebody we need to, we need to be like. We need to be bold like that. But the Apostle Paul went into the third heaven, was absolutely just saw all this stuff. And then the very next thing, he gets a thorn that buffets him from Satan. And everybody's got, man, they've written more Ph.D. papers on what that thorn was than any, nobody knows. Everybody guesses, oh, well, you know, it was his eyes. He had, he, his eyes were messed up. He'd been hit with so many rocks, and he was messed up. And some people said, well, he had, he had, um, he, he, he had seizures. He, he, he was, you know, and, and, and people said this, and people said that. And they've all said, can I tell you one thing that I do know? Whatever it was, it was something that God allowed the devil to buffet that man with, and it messed him up. And so what did he do? He says, Lord, take it away. Isn't that what you do? Now what I do, when we get something from God we don't want, <laughs> take it away, take it away, take it away. Three times. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, you better receive it. Amen. Amen, you better receive it. Even if it's a thorn. Even if it's a thorn, you better receive it from God. I'm here to tell you that God sends us some things that were really cool and some things that are really hard. And you better receive whatever God gives you because I'm here to tell you he had to teach Paul one more thing. That his strength was perfected through his weakness. That the strength of God when he was weak, when that thorn was beating him all to pieces, that the power of God would be mighty in him and it kept him humble. So remember, we're talking about our, our lampstand. So you got wisdom, understanding, counsel, might, knowledge, and the fear of the Lord. All that in there? Yeah. Praise the Lord. I want you to think about this. You know, and, and, and I'm here to tell you that, that it, it's time to quit, okay? But we, I could go for three more days on stuff from the golden lampstand. But I'm not. I mean, I don't want to, you know, I just want to show you the power of God. I want to show you Jesus. You know, every time that we preach the gospel, it, it needs to be about Jesus Christ. You need to be telling people how to get saved. You need to tell people that there is a way. That he is the way, the truth, the life. That he is the light that come into the world. Hallelujah. That he is the one. He's the light that should not be hid under a basket, but should light the whole world. He should be the city upon a hill that we look to. He should be the one. And, and so we need to understand who Jesus Christ is and what he's done for us. 
through the power of the Holy Spirit, that wasn't just a day where, where, they, where they received not just the gift of tongues and different things at Pentecost, but they received wisdom and understanding and counsel and might and knowledge and the fear of the Lord and all those things happened. And all those guys and gals that were present during that time were absolutely changed. Their whole world was turned upside down. And then they left that place and they turned the world upside down because of the power of the Holy Spirit of God living in them. I preached Sunday about being a prisoner of the Lord. And I asked, you know, I wonder, I wonder, are we really, are we really prisoners of the Lord? Do we really follow God in a way to where we would be considered a prisoner, where we were under, under his, his guidance and his leadership all the time? Well, I'm here to tell you that if we will follow God and we will seek and hunger after him and we will hunger after the Spirit of God and every day we will get up and make sure that our lamp is full. See, that's the thing about it. When they, when they talk about, about oil in the Bible, they talk about those ten virgins. And five of them had oil in their lamp. And five of them didn't. And I feel like that's like the church. Some folks have no oil. And I'm here to tell you, when, those sky, when that sky splits, and it will, and we start seeing them coming up out of the graves over across from Hallelujah. I can't wait. I pray that it's, it happens when I'm here. <laughs> hallelujah. I pray we start seeing them going on up. Hallelujah. That we see the graves open. Praise God. Because I know that if they're coming out of them graves, then guess who's going next? Us. Hallelujah. But I'm here to tell you, if you've got no oil in your lamp, you won't have time to go get it. It will be too late. It'll be too late. And you're going to have to go through the rest of that stuff called the tribulation. Some of y'all know all about the tribulation. Amen. I try not to concentrate on that because I'm not going to be here for it. I'm going on the first bus. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm going on the first bus. I'm going on the first bus. We've got to keep our lamps full, y'all. And if we'll do that, God will give us everything that we need to be profitable for the kingdom. Know that tonight. Let's go ahead and stand and I'll close. We'll just go ahead and, and close with a word of prayer tonight. I know Pat's ready to practice and y'all ready to work out some songs for Sunday and different things. And so, so I, I just want to want to want to leave you with that. But I but I'm excited. Bless you, my brother. It's good to see y'all tonight. Some of y'all, man, are smiling. Amen. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? You know what I'm talking about. Praise God. Hallelujah. There's some oil in your lamp tonight. Amen. Amen. Your cup runneth over. Praise God. I want to be so blessed I drink out of the saucer. Amen. I don't even need a cup. I'll just drink out of the saucer and have it so full. I'm here to tell y'all, look, we are not defeated. Amen. We are not defeated. Praise God. I mean, there's a whole lot of mess going on out in this world and everything. And, and you can walk around with your head down and you can, you can just, just, you know, be woe is me. But I'm here to tell you that we serve the most high God. And he has given us everything that we need through the power of the Holy Spirit living in us to do everything we need to do. Hallelujah. And I'm excited about that. So I encourage you tonight. Man, dig in. Let your roots go deep. Let your roots go deep. I mean, allow the Spirit of God to sustain you. The Word says that man, oh, hallelujah, cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth from the mouth of God. Feed yourself. Amen. I try to feed you as best I can, but I'm here to tell you, if all you're getting is a meal on Wednesday and Sunday, why, well, you're going to get pretty thin during the week. Feed yourself. God's given you the Spirit. He's given you everything you need. Allow him to, to just rise up in you. Amen. And walk as one that's victorious. We started with victory in Jesus tonight. Amen. Mm -hmm. Victory in Jesus. Have you got victory tonight? Have you got victory? Look, I, I know we've got trouble, okay? We got trouble. I know that. I got trouble too, y'all. Look, as long as you're in this body, in this fallen world, you're going to have trouble. People living, people dying, people sick. Stuff going on. The world's crazy. Got an election coming up. I'm here to tell you. 
But you know what? I don't look at that because my sight's right there. Amen. I'm looking for what he's got for us and what he's doing through us. And we got we to gotta live that, y'all. The world needs to see it through us, through the church. They need to see that we're not beaten. We're not downtrodden. We're not dejected. We're not giving up. Hallelujah. We're not backing up. Praise God. We're going forward because the word says that the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. And I'm believing that promise. Amen. I'm believing that tonight. Hallelujah. I got friends that I don't want the gates of hell to prevail against them. And as long as we are the church, we have victory in Jesus Christ. So just remember that tonight. We'll go ahead and close the word of prayer tonight. Father God, we just thank you in the mighty name of Jesus for who you are. God, you are mighty, you're powerful, you are awesome, Lord. Lord, I thank you for the Holy Spirit that you didn't leave us without a comforter, Lord. Lord, you said you had to go, and then you would send us the comforter, praise God. And Lord, the comforter has come to the church, Lord. And Lord, your Holy Spirit lives in us. And I thank you for that. I thank you that he leads us, he guides us, he directs us. He gives us wisdom and knowledge and boldness, God. Lord, he gives us everything that we need. Lord, I thank you for that. Lord, I thank you that we will be victorious. I thank you that there will come a day, Lord, when we will see you face to face. And God, I look forward to that day. But, Lord, until then, Lord, we will occupy this old fallen world, and we will preach the gospel, and we will bring people to you, Lord Jesus, as best we can, God, in the power of the Holy Spirit. So, God, I just thank you tonight for who you are, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you all.